If you've ever seen a giant white rope, you're surely wondered how something so big could be made and how its safety could be judged. It turns out to be an interesting process that needs a lot of heat, big tools, and skilled workers working together. The process of making giant wire ropes is hard and requires a lot of special skills. It has many steps, all of which are important if you want to make a reliable and long-lasting result. The engineers in charge of each process are very important, so it makes sense that they are paid very well, with top jobs usually earning more than $100,000. The first thing to do is called wire construction. First, the raw materials, which are almost always high-strength steel rods or thick wires, are heated. Then, they are run through a series of rollers to get the size and shape that's needed. The individual wires that will be used to make the rope are made through a process called hot rolling, which is also used. After the wires have been made, they are cleaned, oiled, and then cleaned again before the next step, which is called wire stranding. This method involves taking several different wires and twisting them together in a way that is similar to how a braid is made. Then, the individual strands are twisted together to make the finished wire rope, which looks a lot like a braided braid. The wire rope then goes through a process called heat treatment, which tries to make it stronger and less likely to wear down. The rope is heated to a certain temperature, which can be anywhere from 1,600 to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit depending on the company. The rope is then cooled in a controlled way. The rope is then cooled again after being at that temperature for a set amount of time, which also changes from company to company. This process, called tempering, reduces the amount of internal stress in the rope. This makes the rope more resistant to wear and tear. After the wire rope has been heated, it is coated with a protection material so that it will last longer and be less likely to rust. Depending on how much the rope costs, this can be done in a number of ways, such as by galvanizing it or covering it with plastic. Both of these choices are open to you. It takes a lot of work and technology to make giant wire bands. To make sure the end product is strong, reliable, and long-lasting, you need specialized tools, skilled workers, and strict quality control methods. But this is only part of the story. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Because once the rope is made, it has to go through the dangerous and difficult world of quality control tests. Before we get into the details of how these monstrosities of ropes are made, let's take a look at what they are really used for. Giant wire ropes are a feat of engineering that can be used in many different areas because they are so flexible. They are important in parts of a wide range of industrial processes because they are strong, last a long time, and can be changed. Let's take a look at some of the most common ways that these huge wires are used. Crane hoists are used to lift and move big things in the building and mining industries. In these things, big wire ropes are used. They are also used to make tower cranes, which are used to build buildings. Giant wire ropes must be used in these situations because they are the safest and most effective way to lift heavy items to high altitudes. They are also cheaper and take up less space than other lifting techniques, like using rams. Huge wire ropes are often used to build bridges especially suspended bridges and bridges with cables that stay in place. The bridge's weight is held up by wire ropes, which also help keep the bridge stable. Giant wire ropes are great for this job because they are both strong and flexible. This makes it possible to build long bridges that can withstand the effects of wind and earthquakes. These ropes let the bridges move around a lot more than they could if they were solid, which makes them a lot safer in the long run. Compared to the bigger bridges that lead into and out of places like New York, Richard bridges can only safely hold a small fraction of the number of cars that the bigger bridges can hold at once. When considering the two, this is something to keep in mind. Offshore drilling is another business that rests a lot on giant wire ropes and drilling operations. The ropes are used to move people and things to and from the drilling platform. They also help support and direct the drilling equipment. During drilling operations, this business uses giant wire ropes to keep both the equipment and the workers safe. Last but not least, giant wire ropes have many uses in the maritime business. They can be used to tie down ships and boats, pull other ships, and build ships. 
Giant wire ropes are good for these uses because they are strong and last a long time. This makes it safe to hold and pull ships and boats. As you can see, these technical works can be used in a lot of different ways. So, without further ado, let's take a look at how they're evaluated. The quality and level of safety of giant wire ropes are directly related to how well they can be used in industries like building, mining, and offshore drilling. Wire ropes are put through strict testing and inspection processes on a regular basis to make sure they meet the quality standards. The first step in checking is to look at the giant wire ropes to see how they look. Inspectors who have been trained look for signs of wear and tear, such as frayed wires, rust, or changes in shape. If there are any problems with the rope, it is thrown away and taken out of service right away so that it can be fixed or replaced. The next step is non-destructive testing, also called NDT. This is done with special tools like magnetic particle screening, ultrasonic testing, and radiography. NDT is used to find problems with a product that might not be clear just by looking at it. This makes sure that the wire rope is safe to use and that any problems can be found and fixed before it is put to work. Load testing is another important part of the process of testing and inspecting. This is done by putting the wire rope through a load that is higher than its working load limit. This is done to see if the wire rope can handle the job it will be used for. For load testing to work, it's usually necessary to have specialized tools, like hydraulic or electric load cells. This is meant to be a true picture of how the rope wire will be used. In addition to these testing methods, regular upkeep and lubrication are also needed to make sure that the giant wire ropes will last and be safe. Lubrication stops friction, which can slow down the rope's wear and tear. Operators can find potential problems early on and take steps to prevent catastrophic breakdowns if they follow a routine maintenance plan and do regular inspections. Even though giant wire bands are known for being very strong and durable, there have been times when they have broken in a very bad way. For example, in the Netherlands in 1985, four people died when a tower crane fell because a wire rope broke. In the same way, when a wire rope that was connected to a branch broke in Australia in 2007, the bridge had to be closed and there was a lot of trouble with the flow of traffic. These events showed how important it is to follow strict testing and checking procedures to make sure that giant wire ropes are safe and reliable. When businesses follow industry standards and use the best practices and procedures for maintenance, inspection, and testing, the risk of catastrophic failures goes down and workers and the general public are safer. And that was all from our side. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel for more.